All right, so this is part two on uh, Stokes' theorem. Hopefully you've watched the video before this. And I wanna do another example um, more thoroughly, uh, take it slow and just remind you um, of the multiple ways you can answer a question <clears throat> like this, a very common question. So we're asked to find the flux of the curl for this field, vector field 2z, 3x, 5y, across the surface in the direction of outward unit normal n. That's a very common way to phrase a question in this section. So, uh, and s, our surface is gonna be the part of the paraboloid uh, z equals four minus x squared plus y squared above the xy plane, that's an upside down paraboloid. So our surface is just the paraboloid uh, right here. This is our surface S. And you can imagine a vector field passing through this and we're trying to calculate the circulation essentially at every point, add them all up along for the whole surface of that paraboloid. And there's multiple ways to do this. So part one, we're going to evaluate, this is the standard way, the double integral. We're gonna do a surface integral of del crossed with F. Remember that's also just that vector itself is often referred to as just the curl of F dotted with N d sigma. And as you recall, d sigma, we have multiple ways to describe the surface area. And one of them is with a parameterization where d sigma is the absolute value, the magnitude, sorry, of a parameterization of two variables, r sub u crossed with r sub v. So that'll be our first step actually, but we're not gonna use u and v for a function like this. Um, you can hopefully see polar coordinates would be the way to go here. So we're gonna parameterize our surface in terms of r and theta. For x, we'll use our cosine theta as usual. Y is our sine theta. And you can see here, x squared plus y squared is really r squared. So my z would be really 4 minus r squared. And that would be true for, uh, well, um, if we think about the bottom part of this paraboloid where it intersects the xy plane, if I set this equal to 0, I'm gonna get a circle x squared plus y squared equals four. That's actually this bounding circle right here, um, which has a radius of two. So my r bound is gonna to have to go between zero and two. And of course, theta will go between zero and two pi. <clears throat> um, next, let's calculate the curl of f. Um, the curl of f is, del crossed with f, so we're going to do a cross product. I, j, k, partial with respect to x, partial with respect to y, partial with respect to z, and my vector field, it's out of reach there, it's 2z, 3x, 5y. 2z, 3x, 5y. For my i component, partial of y, partial of 5y with respect to y is 5, minus the partial with respect to z of 3x, which is 0. So I'm just going to get 5. For my j component, block out the row and the column. Partial with respect to x of 5y is 0. Partial with respect to z with 2z is 2. So it's going to be 0 minus 2. But then remember for the j component, we automatically add another minus. So that's going to make that just positive two. And then finally, with respect to um, for my k component, partial with respect to x, three minus zero. So five, two, three is my curl vector. Now, remember with this choice of d sigma, my, uh, my flux of the curl my surface integral is going to turn into del crossed with f. For n, I'm using, remember n is a unit normal vector, which I can find by doing the cross product. That would be r sub r. Well, let's we'll talk about this in a second, but r sub r crossed with r sub theta or possibly r sub theta crossed with r sub r. Well, We'll, we'll discuss 
how you decide what order um, we're going to do that cross product in. But to make it a unit vector, you divide by the magnitude. And of course, um, that's going to get multiplied by d sigma, which is the magnitude in this case of r sub r across r sub theta d a. We're going to integrate over the region now. Notice those cancel out. We, we showed this on the previous video, so that should not be news to you. So we're going to be integrating this over the area, namely the area of the circle. Let me do that integral. Um, yeah, so let's talk about um, how do I know it's r sub r cross r sub theta as opposed to r sub theta cross r sub r, because those are two different vectors pointing in opposite direction. It goes back to, and this is one thing I wanted to touch on on this video, oftentimes they'll ask you to run this integral in the direction of outward unit normal n, meaning for this surface, I want to calculate the flux of the curl for an outward pointing away like this, unit normal vector n. So how do I know, um, which is going to be produced by this cross product, but I, how do I know which order is going to give me an outward, uh, fa outward facing normal vector? So here's how you can think about this. Let's consider like level curves here. So if I try to drew, draw a little level curve, maybe right about where this one is, and maybe one down here. So at that point there, what R sub R means is which, which direction would I have to move? Let's say I'm at this point to increase, and I'm and on the surface, to increase the radius, to increase my R, my distance from the Z axis, well, you can tell here I'd want to along the surface, I'd want to move towards this larger level curve. I'd want to move this direction. So R sub R is going to be pointing that direction, kind of down slope. That's R sub R. R sub theta, remember theta, uh, we go around the circle counterclockwise. You go around this way, just like on the unit circle. So if you're at this point and you wanted to move in the direction of increasing theta, you'd be going tangent to the level curve, kind of this way along the side of that mountain, that would be r sub theta. Now, using your right hand rule, convince yourself that if I do r sub r crossed with r sub theta, if I use my right hand and swing, move this vector into this one, my vector would be pointing outward. So in this situation, an outward unit normal vector would be found by doing r sub r crossed with r sub theta. This is going to produce an outward unit normal vector n. If I did r sub theta crossed r sub r, if I did it the other way, I would get an inward. I would be calculating the flux of the curl in the direction of inward facing unit normal, which is not what they asked for. Okay, so now we know which order we want to do the cross product, but we haven't figured out what r sub r and r sub theta are yet. So um, let's, there it is r sub r partial derivative with respect to r is going to get cosine theta, sine theta, negative 2r, r sub theta, partial derivative of this with respect to theta is negative r sine theta, um, r cosine theta, and the derivative of that would be 0 with respect to theta. So now I can do the cross product. Cosine theta, sine theta, negative two r, negative r sine theta, r cosine theta zero. Okay, do a little work on your own. I want to speed up the video a little bit. If you do your cross product, you should end up with 2r squared cosine theta, 2r squared sine theta, and then r. So then finally, I can calculate my surface integral. I'm going to be integrating over the area, over the region r, over the area. Uh, we're going to, we've got our curl was 5, 2, 3, 
dotted with r sub r cross r sub theta, so dotted with 2r squared cosine theta, 2r squared sine theta, r. That is going to give you uh, 10 r squared cosine theta plus 4 r squared sine theta plus 3r. Uh, remember, when you're using the parameterization to describe, put limits on my area, we, we don't need, it looks like we're using polar, but we're just using two uh, parameters to describe this. So it is just going to be dr d theta. You don't have to add an extra r here. I made that mistake on a previous video. And my limits for r would go from 0 to 2. Theta would go from 0 to 2 pi. Um, a lot of work, so try it on your own. Make sure you get an answer of 12 pi. Okay, same problem, same vector field. Now we're going to compute the flux of the curl by evaluating the surface interval. Uh, but this time we're going to use it with the other formula for d sigma, which is the gradient version. Magnitude of the gradient of f divided by the magnitude of the gradient of f dotted with p. So, and also remember then my what this integral turns into when you put that in. This is when you put that in for d sigma. It's going to turn into. I'll put over the area again. Um, the curl of f again, del crossed with f. Uh, dotted with now the normal vector for this situation we're going to use we're going to make this a function of x y and z and we're just going to do the gradient as we know the gradient of a function will be pointing uh, perpendicular to the surface so this is going to be plus or minus the gradient divided by we wanted to make it a unit vector so we'll divide by the magnitude of the gradient and then our formula for d sigma is the magnitude of the gradient divided by the magnitude of the gradient dotted with p, a unit normal vector, we'll say dA. And so similarly to the parameterization form, you get some cancellation here. So this is really just going to be, let's go ahead and just so you see different looks at this. Remember, del crossed with f is also called the curl of f dotted with the gradient of f over the magnitude of the gradient of f dotted with p. OK, so what is f? Yeah, so let's rewrite this function. If I move everybody to one side, I think I, since these are, if I distribute it and make it, they would be negative, I'm going to move them over to the other side. So I'm going to define this function to be a function of x, y, z, I think of this as a level surface where I move this over so I'd get x squared plus y squared uh, plus z. Um, let's go ahead and move the minus 4 equals 0. So my gradient of f would be 2x, 2y, and just 1. Um, remember, for this formula, you're thinking about the um, shadow region this surface if we the shadow region would be the circle here so my my uh unit normal p would just be pointing straight up so in this case i can just use p to be k hat or the vector zero zero one so uh, we've got the gradient here if i did the gradient which which would be I put plus or minus here, but clearly if I'm using positive x positive y values, this is going to produce a vector that's pointing outward, right? This is going to be positive. That's going to be positive. So it's just going to be the straight up gradient. I'm going to dot my gradient with, in this case, my p is going to be k, uh, and we'll take the magnitude of it. So that would be the magnitude of two x, two y, one dotted with zero, zero, 001 
That's pretty easy. That's zero, that's zero, that's one. This is just going to be one. We've already worked out the curl of F. We did that on the previous, it's the same field. So this is just going to be the integral over the region of five, two, three, dotted with my gradient was 2x, 2y, 1, technically divided by this, but that just came out to be 1. That's going to give me 10x plus 4y plus 3. And I want to integrate this over the region. And the region R would be the, the region, the circle here. I called it A previously, but that's my region I'm integrating, which is that same circle. This is that same circle, x squared plus y squared equals 4, which would be better to integrate in terms of polar. So then I would convert to polar. I would have 10 x is r cosine theta, y is r sine theta. Now I'm converting to polar, so it would be r dr d theta. <coughs> r stretches from 0 to 2 is its circle of radius 2. Theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. And if I distribute this, you will see 4r squared sine theta plus 3r, 3r, yep, the r d theta, that that is in fact the same integral we ended up with when we did it in the uh, parameterization form. So this integral will also come out to be 12 pi as it should. <clears throat> So there's doing the surface integral with both parameterization and gradient versions of the sigma. But go, just to remind you, and this was touched on in the previous video, <laughs> this this we, part of what Stokes' theorems tells you is uh, we are going to get the same value. Um, here, I'll just draw this back. Remember that. If we're trying to calculate the flux of the surface, the flux of the curl over the surface, that's equivalent. That would be the same no matter what surface uh, I use, as long as this is my bounding circle right here, right? Um, we did the example, like you can have many surfaces. If, if this is the intersecting circle of that surface, they're all going to have the same value. And so if that's the case, why not just use the simplest possible surface that involves that curve, this circle of radius two, which would just be a flat disk, x squared plus y squared less than or equal to four with z being equal to zero. And the flux of the curl, which we know is the double integral over the surface of the curl of f, del crossed with f, dotted with n d sigma. Well, what is n? I don't need any fancy formula here. If this is my surface, what's normal to that surface is just k hat, which is 0, 0, 1. And if I use that, I've already done the curl of f. We're talking about the same field. So that was 5, 2, 3, dotted with 0, 0, 1 d, let's say d, d, a here. So this would be over, over the region. The, the area, the, the surface is the same as the area of the region, right? So a, when I do the dot product, I get zero, zero, and I get three. So this is just three, the double integral over my region. Let's change that to r. I think that's more important, more common. But what is that? This is just the area of that region, three times the area of that region. This is a circle with a radius of two, if you recall, because this was the circle x squared plus y squared equals four. That's a circle with a radius of two. 
So this is just three times pi times two squared. And not surprisingly, that gives you the same exact answer as the previous two methods we used. Much, much simpler, right? So that, that should be allowed, but uh, you can run that by your professor if they really want you to do those surface integrals we did, or if you recognize I can just do choose to use a different surface, which is just this flat disk, it's gonna be a lot easier. And then finally, just to remind you that um, you know, the full Stokes theorem says you can calculate the flux of the curl by doing the surface integral, which we've done three versions of, but that's also just going to equal the um, line integral of f dotted with dr over that uh, curve c, which was, let me redraw the picture. Remember, the original problem was stated, we had this upside down paraboloid and it was intersecting the xy plane in this circle with a radius of two, right? x squared plus y squared equals four. And integrating all of the uh, flux of the curl over the surface is equivalent to evaluating the circulation, doing f dotted with dr over this curve right here, c. So to do it that way, what I would do is parameterize. I need to parameterize my just my circle here. It's a circle of radius two. This is just a single variable. X would be two times cosine t. Y would be two sine t. And z is zero. We're in the xy plane, right? Um, I'm going to need dr. That would be negative two sine t, two cosine t zero um, on on r of t what is f equal remember f was here let's rewrite it f was uh what was f f was 2z 3x 5y so on r of t remember this is x this is y this is z f is going to be two times zero is zero three times x, so three times that is six cosine t, five times y, so five times that is 10 sine t. And if I do the integral all the way around the circle from zero to two pi, that's gonna be the integral of zero, six cosine t, 10 sine t dotted with dr is negative two sine t, two cosine t, zero. That dot product, I'm gonna get zero here, 12 cosine squared t, and then zero here. Should be a dt there. So I'm gonna get the integral from zero to two pi of 12 cosine squared t dt. Um, you should be able to evaluate this. You're going to need your identity for cosine squared t, the half angle identity. Um, and we'll just take it one more step here. I could pull out the 12. Remember, your identity for cosine squared is one half, one plus cosine of 2t. And if you work this out, finish this integral off, you will get the exact same answer of 12 pi. So there are four ways we could tackle that problem. One final note here, um, again, referring to the order, if you're doing the parameterization method for D sigma, you have to be careful when they ask for an example of calculating the flux of the curl. And again, usually they will ask for outward in the direction of outward unit normal n. Uh, for the previous one we did, we figured out that it was going to be to produce that. We, we had an upside down paraboloid, and we realized that we had to do r sub r cross with r sub theta. But just to show you how that could change, um, I'm just making up, sort of making up a new problem. What if instead, for the, maybe the same vector field or a different one, we used an upward facing paraboloid? 
let's say um, z equals x squared plus y squared, but only going up to z equals one. So we cut it off right here from zero to one. And I was doing the um, parameterization similar to what I did before. If I imagine some level circles and I want an outward facing unit normal, notice the circles, my level curves get bigger. The radius gets bigger as we move up. So if I pick a random point on my surface, R sub R should be pointing in the direction of increasing R on the surface to increase my radius, I would want to kind of move upwards along this paraboloid. R sub theta moves in the direction of increasing theta. That's going to be in the counterclockwise going around this circle. So this time, in order by the right-hand rule, in order to get a cross product that's facing outward for my unit normal, I would want to cross R sub theta with R sub R. In this case, I'd want to do it the other way. Okay. So I just wanted to show you an example. A lot of times I, I feel like when I do most of the problems, if you're using polar, it's usually going to be R sub R crossed with R sub theta, but there are times when you may want to switch it the other direction. If you ended up doing R sub R crossed with R sub theta, you're probably just going to get the negative of the correct answer because you'd actually be computing the flux of the curl in the direction of inward facing normal rather than outward facing normal. So you wouldn't, you'd just be, you'd have the opposite of the correct answer. Okay, one last thing. This is kind of just an interesting thing. Um, suppose they asked, someone asked you to calculate the flux of the curl, surface integral, in the direction of outward pointing normal vector. But instead of just a single surface, we're going to talk about, well, a surface made up of two, two surfaces connected. So we've seen a problem like this before when we were doing triple integrals, kind of looks like an ice cream cone. Um, say I'm talking about the surface that's made up of the top half of a sphere where it intersects a cone, and you get a shape that looks like an an ice cream cone. And I want to calculate the flux of the curl over the entire surface, the top part and the bottom part. But if they insist on outward pointing in the direction of outward pointing um, normal vector n, there's an interesting result here. You think about, we know from Stokes' theorem that if I just wanted to calculate the uh, flux of the curl of the top part of the surface, I could just evaluate the circulation around the intersecting circle. This unit normal vector n, for it to be pointing outward, we must be talking about circulation that's going this direction, sort of counterclockwise around that normal vector. Again, by the right-hand rule, that would produce a vector pointing outward. So if you can imagine all the curl vectors along here going that direction, going this direction, that's going to induce a curl, right? If I'm going this direction, when it hits the boundary, that's going to induce a circulation going around this curve counterclockwise. However, if we move, if we think about this one, if this is an outward facing unit normal, then I must be, my curl must look like this, right? For the right hand roll, moving my hand around to produce a vector pointing outward it must be curling this way. And just like up here, all the curls right next to each other, these guys are going to cancel out. We talked about that in the previous video, but the ones that get right next to this curve, that's going to induce, see it's going this way, right? That's going to induce a circulation going the opposite way on my uh, intersecting curve. And so what's going to happen is they're going to cancel each other out. So one way to denote it, right, we've got break those up into two surfaces. This would be the equivalent to evaluating the line integral in the direction of counterclockwise. But we can see for surface two, that's going to induce uh, a circulation around my intersecting curve in the opposite direction, right, clockwise. And those two are going to cancel out, which means I'm going to get an effect of, it's just going to cancel out. I'm going to get an answer of zero. So just kind of an interesting result.
Okay, uh, hopefully this all helps. Um, thanks for watching.